Welcome to Creative Caregiving and Beyond. More and more people are having to become caregivers for their elderly loved ones, and navigating this journey can be really difficult. This podcast will provide guidance and give practical tips for your family. Your host is Wendy Whiteman, elder law attorney, author, speaker, and leading insight advisor in senior protocol and senior lifestyle trends. Know that you are not alone in getting the help that you need. Let's get started. And here's Wendy. Well, welcome to the show. And like many of you, I'm the primary caregiver for my mother. And today we've got some great information for you out there in your journey, just to make it a little bit easier. And today our special guest, we have Lori Miller and we have Amelia Borland from the Purpose Project. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you so Thank much you for, for having us. us. We're really excited to be here. Great, great. Well, I'm excited to have you here. You guys got some great information. And I just want to start off with uh, just give us a little uh, synopsis of your background and uh, what you've done. Well, I'll start. I'm okay. um, Laurie Miller, and I own um, a home care agency, Apple Care and Companion, here in Dallas. Okay. And I started it in 2006. Okay. So I've been doing it for about 16 years. Um, so I really know the caregiving, professional side of caregiving in and out. Okay. I was also my mother's um, caregiver toward the end of her life. So oh, I understand great. the personal side. And that actually happened during um, we started the business together. Great. So it was really kind you of a, me and my mother. Yeah. yeah. She was a social worker, hospice volunteer, mm -hmm. the whole thing. And we started the, the business together. Okay. But then... Um, she had some issues and, and passed away during that time, but I learned a lot on that side. Okay. And most recently, I received um, my master's in gerontology. Oh, congratulations. Yes, thank you, thank you. <laughs> very good, yes. very good. Okay, Amelia? Um, yeah, so uh, Amelia Borland. I'm an occupational therapist, actually. Okay. Um, I've been an occupational therapist for a little over 10 years now and um, has spent the vast majority of my career working clinically, okay. um, mostly with adults in pretty much every setting that you can imagine. Okay. So um, skilled nursing, rehabilitation, acute care, ICU. Uh, if you can think about it, I have probably <laughs> been there. Um, and I'm one of those people who's really, really fortunate to have honestly found my calling. Like, this is what I'm supposed to do. I'm supposed to be an occupational therapist. Um, but a couple of years ago, I kind of just got, um, I got tired of seeing the same things happen to people over and over again that didn't mm -hmm. really need to happen. Right. And so I kind of left the mo medical model and moved out into uh, the real world okay. um, to try to work in a preventative way. Um, and so now I own a company called Higher Standards Caregiver Training, okay. and I train family caregivers and non-medical professional caregivers. Well, very good. You guys cover the entire gamut with, as far as caregiving and uh, rehab. Oh my gosh, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. That's great experience. So you start, you've kind of combined your talents and uh, put together the, uh, the Purpose Project. So what, what inspired you to do that? Well, um, kind of what you just said. We combined <laughs> our talents. So mm -hmm. Amelia and I had met um, kind of during the pandemic mm -hmm. with some online uh, networking meetings in the senior industry, okay. and we, we really connected. Um, but we both saw this kind of a culmination of where everything was going okay. in the sense that we have a caregiver shortage. Yes. We, we see that. But the pandemic really exasperated people's need to have meaning in their life and to okay. have purpose in their life. Mm -hmm. But so we connected and we talked about this and it for us it was just this this clear path of we can create the purpose project, which we'll mention in a minute. Okay. But we can answer these these, these solve these problems that, that exist. Right. And we're very excited about that. And I'll let you continue more. Yeah, I think honestly, um, a lot of the credit for sort of the overall vision of the Purpose Project really goes to Lori. I call her the great Lori Miller. <laughs> uh, if you if you see either one of us on social media, she is always tagged as the great Lori Miller, and there's a reason for that, and that's because. Um, she really does have this extraordinary vision that um, I was lucky enough that she reached out to me about to, to kind of include me in. So Lori gave me a call one day and she was like, listen, there is just this huge need amongst people. Mm -hmm. People have lost their way right. during the pandemic. Yes. And, and of course, I think that really what happened was a lot of issues that were already there mm -hmm. were just highlighted right. with COVID, right? Yes. So 
you know, how can we help to connect people with this need that they have mm -hmm. to have something purposeful to do with their lives, to mm -hmm. give back, to serve? Mm -hmm. um, because Lori and I both know, and of course there's a ton of research demonstrating that when you serve others, when you can give back and have purpose in your own life, right. it's great for the person that you are serving, that mm -hmm. you're caring for, mm -hmm. but it's also of course great for you too. It's sort That's of, true. it's instant yeah. gratification. Yeah. Um, it's great for things like your mental health. Mm -hmm. There's actually research demonstrating that it's good for your physical health. Okay. Um, and so, you know, Lori just had this idea, how can we sort of combine our skill sets, mm -hmm. her as an agency owner and as a gerontologist, um, and mine as an occupational therapist to help um, provide people with the skills that they would need okay. in order to become really fantastic companions for seniors who are out there in need because there is such a shortage. Right. There's such a demand for people who, who need companions. Right. And at the same time, there's a shortage of companions that are available. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. then kind of under that same umbrella, there's so many people who are out there looking for something better, who are yes. looking for something greater. And it was just like, we have the ability to do this. We have the skills to do this. Yes. We have to do this. <laughs> well, that's great. That's great. And this is going to help so many people, so many families. When I first heard about it, I was like so excited because I've been there, you know, with this, this journey with my mom, uh, having gaps in caregivers. I'm going through it right now, matter of fact. So uh, <laughs> it's so important to be able to find qualified people who actually want to do it and right. have a heart to do it. And uh, that, that's wonderful. So you're meeting many, many needs. So let's get down to it, Lori the Great. Uh, <laughs> well, tell us about the Purpose Project. Exactly what is it? Okay, so Amelia and I, like you said, we, we combined our talents and we created an online educational program. Okay. So it has my soft skills of being an agency owner and working with older adults. Okay. And we combined Amelia's hard skills mm -hmm. of being an occupational therapist. Yes. And we think we've created a, an exceptional program, mm -hmm. an educational program. And basically it's, it's free for the companion who wants to, to do it. Mm -hmm. And you go through a self-paced, um, you know, like we said, online program. Okay. And then when you graduate, we will introduce them or set them up with a professional agency okay. so that they will become an employee of that agency okay. for all the protections that that, that has. Oh, very um, good. Yeah. And then they'll get paid as an employee would. Yeah. So, I mean, I think most people like a little pocket change anyway. That's right. That's, you know, that or doesn't hurt. <laughs> it doesn't hurt. Um, and, and, and it's as simple as that. It Very really good. is. Very mm -hmm. good. So the training process, if someone's interested in mm -hmm. doing that, do they do they pay for the training? No, but how do they? How does that work? It, it'll always be free for okay. the companions. Okay. We, that that's just something we we want no hurdles, no roadblocks. Um, they just have to. The most important thing is they have to want to work afterward. Okay. Go with this. You know, go with an agency. Yes. And work yes. and actually work. So. Is there an age limit on someone who would want to be a companion? Because I know, are you looking at people who are retired and have that extra time? Well, we're happy with everybody, but okay. we're kind of concentrating on, on several different segments. Okay. One would be the uh, recently retired person, okay. whether um, by circumstance or by choice. You know, a lot of people are retired now yes. because of the pandemic and yes. not necessarily um, by choice. Okay. Um, and the, a lot of those people really need purpose. They need yeah. a reason to get up, yeah. even if they are still looking for another job. Right. Um, like Amelia said, working with older adults is instant gratification. You make a difference that minute and you feel yeah. it. So it all actually helps you become uh, more employable because right. you, it helps your self-esteem. Mm -hmm. it, it, helping others really boosts so much within a person. Um, another category of of person that we are trying to attract is there's a lot of caregivers who lost their loved one during mm -hmm. the pandemic and right. couldn't be with them. That's true. Whether it was locked down in a nursing home or mm -hmm. whether they couldn't fly to be with that person. Mm -hmm. And we really feel that their caregiving, caregiving journey got cut short and they need to grieve. And it's yeah. a process where they, they, they need to almost give care for someone else. Right to be on their terms. And then I think their grieving process will, um, will, will work better. Right. Um, and there's a few more categories that we were looking for. Yeah. So certainly, um, folks, 
obviously the pandemic has been really difficult for teachers. A lot of mm. teachers have left the profession. Oh, that's true. But these are also um, often folks who are called to serve, who are called to work with others. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, we envision teachers as being potentially great um, companions as well, who would yes. be great fits for the Purpose Project. Yeah. Um, you know, really, there's no, there's no limit to who we are looking for. Okay. We're looking for anyone who has a heart to serve, okay. who enjoys people and yes. who enjoys being with people. And, you know, um, I think that kind of getting back to your, your direct question about is there an age limit? Well, as long as as long as you can <laughs> can do the job safely, yeah. which yeah. really being a companion is not like being a full on physical hands on caregiver. Okay. Like, you yeah. know, this isn't this should not be a physical job to okay. be a companion, okay. um, even though, you know, we do teach like a lot of the safety the safety knowledge that you would want to have for, for your comfort level. Um, but, you know, I think that there are a huge amount of people who, because of the ageism in our society, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Are, are this great untapped wealth right. and resource. That's so true. You yeah, know, so true. and they have so much to give. And, you know, we really think that this is a great way for those folks mm -hmm. to share their wisdom, to give back to be a the productive part of society that they yes. absolutely can be. Yes. Um, you know, so so we're we're looking for for anyone who kind of fits into that category. That's great. I'm sure you guys are gonna have a lot of great candidates. Because whether you're, you know, stopping your career uh, 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 was uh, missed uh, were well, directed in a different direction from teaching or retirement it's something about having something to look forward to, filling a void, mm -hmm. you know, if, if, if someone is has lost a loved one. The last thing you really need to do, I'm not a psychiatrist like my brother, He, I, I try to play it, but he, I'm really, I'm not, uh, as you guys know. But it's, it's great to not have an idle mind, just to sit there and think about all of the things that you've lost. I mean, to fill that with something. Right. And so that's, that's just a great need, you guys are, it's a great project you guys are doing. This is wonderful. Well, yeah. there's actually research that shows um, helping others in this manner, not only does it help with uh, less in depression, like yes. you just said, yes. but your risk of dementia, Really? Uh huh. Because you're you're doing something. You're not just thinking of yourself. You're uh -huh. out there doing something. But your mind isn't idle. You're experiencing new experiences and, yes. and doing something different. Actually, stepping out of your comfort zone mm -hmm. is also very important to reduce your risk for dementia. Very good. Yeah. So, and you mentioned uh, stress relief, cardiovascular issues. I mean, it's yes. your physical health as well as your mental health. Well, that's amazing. You guys have done your research. I see you. We uh, <laughs> we, we do like the research. Yeah, we, we're we're pretty we're pretty data driven folks. You know, Lori, with yes. her background as a gerontologist, and mine um, academically as an yes. occupational therapist, we we do our due diligence yes. before yes, we do, do anything. You, you've yeah. done it. You've yeah. done it. That's that's great. Well, uh, how do you, how do you find candidates? Well, one, we'll come on a podcast, okay. yes. <laughs> yeah. meet you. Well, we are actively um, talking to as many people as we can, Okay. Um, whether it's people who what we like to call friends of the Purpose Project. Maybe they're not interested in being um, a recruit or a candidate, but they know people who are. Yeah. So just we have a, a Facebook page and we have um, a website and we're just trying to get get the word out as, as best we can. Okay, very good, very good. So you're not an agency, but you just, you train and can refer to agencies. Yes. Do you ever get, uh, I guess, referrals from agencies to say, hey, train some of our people? We, ha we haven't yet. <laughs> not, n not yet, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. I think that's a good question. I think uh -huh. that that's something that we anticipate yeah. might happen in the future. Yes. Um, but but we're, we're not quite there, we're not quite there yet. Yeah. Yes, yes, I understand. It's, it's, it's evolving and it's a, it's a great idea. Yes. Because it's, it's, it's new. Yes. I mean, it, there's so many great ideas that have been born out of the, the pandemic because we see, you're right, things have been highlighted. Mm -hmm. They were there, but, you know, we didn't see them as clearly as we see them now, mm -hmm. especially in the elder care space and these gaps. And you guys are just, you know, at the forefront of this is wonderful. Well, one of the other things that's going on that you mentioned is because the, the staffing shortage is so great, uh -huh. a lot of agencies cannot fulfill these, um, these requests. Okay. So they'll get a request from a family who they just need a companion that for whether it's the isolation that their mom is experiencing right. or they're all back to work now. You yeah. know, maybe mom yeah. moved in with them for a little while, but yeah. now she's home. Everyone's back to work. 
and and she just needs some attention. Yes. But there's not enough staff to go around, so that kind of um, case kind of people can't handle it, and right. they need to do a higher acuity case. Well, we need that; those people need the help just as much. Yes, it's that's so true. important. That's true. So yeah. Yeah. And so, I I think oh sorry no, not no, to interrupt you. Ahead. I was just going to say I think you know. One of the things that we're interested in seeing as we have more companions go through the purpose project uh -huh. and as they're placed with more agencies is one of the things we're interested in looking at is what are the health effects for the folks, you know, of course, who are going through the, the companionship mm -hmm. process, mm -hmm. but also, you know, how are we helping to be protective for those seniors that we can place them with? Because right. again, we know that things like social social interaction, yes. for example, is one of the ways that we prevent fall risk. Yes. It's one of the ways that we prevent cognitive decline. Mm -hmm. And so if we can help to connect folks who can be mutually benefited, then you know, hopefully we can help to both of those parties to stay healthier yes. for longer, to live more meaningful lives, mm -hmm. and hopefully overall um, also to kind of reduce some of the strain and the stress that's on our healthcare system by that's helping true. people to live longer, healthier, safer lives. That is so true. That is so true. Because there is a move in the elder care space to keep people at home as long as they can. And, right. and most people want to be home. Right. Of course. Yeah, they can stay home. They don't necessarily want to have to go to a facility unless they have no other alternative or it's a good fit for them. And so if they can stay home, this allows them to do that. Right. Yeah. And, and we're talking about little things like maybe helping with meals. Yes. Um, just mm -hmm. helping around the house. Mm -hmm. Just some of those little things mm -hmm. that which, which will have, um, if someone can't do that anymore, that's why they need to go into independent or assisted living. Right. But if you just have that come into the home, and it's not big stuff. We're not talking about physically bathing someone or right. anything like that. It's right. just helping them do what they can do at their, at their best. And it, it is enough to keep them home. It is. That's a great, a great, great idea. What about the, the training process? Mm -hmm. How long is it generally? Well, it really dep it depends on the candidate and how long they want to take to go through it. Okay. So we actually give people a total of six weeks from the point w when they are enrolled okay. to when we request that they complete the program. Okay. However, um, people can honestly go at their own pace. We've had candidates complete it in as little as I think three days, yeah. okay. um, you know, and then some people choose to take longer. It really truly is meant to be flexible yes. to fit into the lifestyle that, that someone has, um, you know, so that they can get it done at their own pace. Yeah, it's all online, so they would need an internet connection, Okay, but it's a great program and you can do it on your phone, you can do it on a tablet, you That's can do it on a laptop. And all of them, like if you happen to be on the phone and you're, you want to look at it, you can close that and then you can go to the laptop and, and it'll pick up where you were. So it's very flexible. Um, like we, we didn't want people to feel they had to do it too fast and then we right. didn't want people to, to never finish. So we have that kind of kind six of week maximum, mm -hmm. yeah. but, but three weeks, two to three weeks, you know, a few hours a week. Is, is pretty average. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do they get, do they receive any type of uh, companion certification or uh, in-house certification or something from you guys? Uh, uh, no, no certification because okay. it's right. not a certified program, uh -huh. um, but a uh, completion. Completion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. They, they yeah. receive a, a certificate of completion okay. that says on it, you know, all of the things that they've been trained on. Very good. Um, so that there's some documentation right. of that. Yeah. Okay. Very good. And, Very and, good. and we talked about going over the soft skills and, and the hard skills, but we also do talk about um, dementia. Okay. Cognitive impairment, because um, that's a, a, a big, big factor. It is I, a big factor. I have to say, one of the um, a gentleman who just completed the the course said that he wished he he would have had this information when he was caring for his, his wife before she died. And I thought that that was high praise. Well, I'm thinking the same thing. I wish I'd had this information and I will definitely look it up uh, as well as I care for my mom. There, uh, there are a lot of instances where I cover certain shifts myself uh -huh. right. and I've picked up tidbits from, you know, different caregivers and um, just different things online. But you, you you're not born knowing how to do this. Right. You know? Right. No, you not need, at all. You need training you, in, in especially the. Uh, the mental aspects of it, uh, occupational therapy, yeah. we've had th that come in and, and how important it is. I didn't understand the importance of that uh, before, you know, and, and it is so important for their daily activities, yeah. just doing those little things. I'll tell you, respect and smiles go a long yeah. way. They do. That's mm -hmm. the secret to all, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, 
Yes. And does your course cover, I mean, it's so important to know how to read a, a, another person, you know, mm -hmm. the, the elder person. And right. I, I have this conversation a lot with my caregivers. I said, you have to read mom's facial expressions or, or read what she's kind of going through at that time because it's not going to be the same all day long. Right. And you have to read that mood and, and you're right. And just knowing when to smile and knowing when to back off. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and yeah. and not always having to have the last word or not always oh having to be gosh. correct. Yes. Everyone right. doesn't have to be correct. You, you do you not. Just, it, you know, it's yeah. almost like when we were uh, raised, I remember my mom raising me, you, you couldn't talk back in my generation. Oh my gosh, you know, talk back if you want to. And to this day, I, you know, it's just a matter of respect, but you learn to, to bunk, you know, just shut it up and just, right. okay. But there, there's a phrase, do yeah. you want to be happy or do you want to be correct? That's right. And, and I, That's you know, absolutely right. But, yeah. I, but I do think there is training involved. It's not, it, for some people it is natural and for others yeah. it's not. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's so true. And there is, there is a module in the program that talks specifically about communication. Okay. And then we talk quite a bit more um, in the module that covers dementia mm -hmm. um, care as well about specific methods to use for communication and kind of to help manage things when folks have dementia as well. Great, great. So after, after someone completes the course, if they, do they get a chance to come back if we're a refresher at some point uh, in the future, can they uh, go back in for that? Or if they, after a year or two, they're like, you know what, I wouldn't mind just kind of refreshing myself with a particular area. Do they still have access to the information? It would, they wouldn't, I think at six weeks, they would have access. Uh, they, if they wanted to, they, we, they could always re-sign up okay. at that point. Mm -hmm. okay. mm -hmm. Very we, good. we look forward to to two or three years down the road. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was gonna say, I don't. Honestly, we don't. We don't yeah. know the answer to that yet because right. we're. Uh, we kind of haven't crossed that bridge yet. But I definitely imagine. Um, you know, I'm a firm believer um, through what I do at Higher Standards Caregiver Training that it's really important to have the ability to review training and to yeah. reiterate training yes. because very few of us just. Right. Get something right. Exactly. after one go. Yeah. yeah. So I'm sure that that's yeah. something that we'll be yeah. exploring and kind of figuring out what needs are as we go into the future. And as we update too. Yeah. I would yeah. imagine. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I know it's going to be successful and, and thank you and kudos to both of you for taking this on. Uh, it's such a need for this and I'll definitely be spreading the word about it because it's just, it's an awesome thing. You're, you're fulfilling so many needs and desires and helping so many people. I can see it. I can already see it. So well, thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you thank so much you. for having us. Yes, we are so delighted to be here with you. <laughs> so if someone wants to join the, the Purpose Project, and I definitely encourage you to, if you're looking for um, a second uh, uh, career or just you know something to fulfill a purpose or fill a void, uh, you definitely want to reach out to the Purpose Project. So what would they do to, to contact you guys? How would they contact you? So the easiest thing I think to do is to go to the website, and that is www dot join the purpose project dot com and there's a lot of information about the program there and there are also ways that you can reach out and contact us directly um, you can request a preview of the courses all kinds of things so it's a great place to get more information as well as to reach out and ask to be enrolled wonderful wonderful well laurie and amelia thank you so much for coming on the show and i look forward to, to getting to know you more and sending more people to you and uh, hear more about the purpose project Thank you so much. Thank you we for having us. It. Yeah, thank you. Well, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and like us as well. And reach out to a senior and brighten their day.